believe we're up and running here. It looks like a one kegger. <coughs> it's funny, it was a busy, busy weekend. I don't know how these guys calculate their beer. It was a very busy weekend here, and there's still only one keg outside. Can't tell, no idea. It's unusual the gas delivery here. This usually happens much, much earlier than this. He's running very late this morning. Gas here in, uh, in Tokyo is, is delivered two ways. Our building actually has gas pipes underneath. It's city gas. But a lot of people do it this way. The gas containers come. This is the restaurant next door, the, uh, the Oyster Shack. I think this guy is changing two of these canisters, and it happens a couple of times a week, I think. I'm not really quite sure. I don't keep track of it. He's running late. Yeah, he must be really, really late today. No idea what's happened. Morning, gang. Morning, good morning, good morning. Well, the oyster shack, of course, there's a grill at every table. People grill their own oysters, you know, they, they, the, the staff brings the seafood and oysters and whatever from the back, and the people grill it. They bring, uh, they bring everybody white gloves, not delicate white gloves, big chunky white work gloves and tongs, and you pick up your oyster shells and you do your thing on the table. So I can't imagine their energy costs. It's obviously going to have to be, going to have to be changed. Okay, today we're back to, we're not back, we're, we're working in our traditional printmaking field here today <laughs> with an iPad. It's tracing day today still. Password. passwords on the internet like there's a lot of financial data on this iPad <laughs> okay should be a quiet stream today what we've got is just this is the only work I have doing here there's no carving there's no noisy stuff there's no nothing else so uh, you're gonna have to prompt me for any uh, questions whatever that are needed I'm just just gonna sit here and work on our cats If I have a charge, let's see. Are we charged? Yes. Yes, this is the questionable cats. Not sure how much I need to explain what's going on. We talked about it pretty well the other day. There's going to be obviously new, new people joining in today as we go who may not understand what's going on. So let's take it as it comes. And as I mentioned the other day, I still haven't figured out a way to actually connect these two devices, my OS, even though my computer is just over a year old, my OS is uh, too old for the job of uh, joining these two devices, it seems. The tracings that the British Museum have, these, these images that they have, have been uh, damaged over the years. They've been messed around. And actually, we're seeing a part of that here. <clears throat> you see this line here? 
The image is in the British Museum. Let me zoom out to the whole thing. They're on a very thin paper, the kind of gumpy that you've seen me paste around and fool around with in here. And they, they seem to be, you know, drawings ready for, for block cutting, as we've talked about in the videos. But some previous collector has damaged them. Some previous collector trimmed them all to the actual rough image themselves. And then that collector pasted them down on fairly stiff paper, kind of a cardboard. And in some places, and this is one of those places, you can see where they made a mess of it. They cut their paper here, and yet here we have an outline. And so somebody, the collector or somebody else, took a pen or a brush and filled in at the end of it where hoax size design went out to the edge of the paper. So this last little segment was filled in by somebody else just to take it to the end. This happens on quite a few of them. For me, it's irrelevant. It's nothing to do with the, these, the image size itself. And we ourselves, actually, in doing this thing, in order to get all of our prints the same size to fit into the same series, we have also trimmed off a little bit at the edge or we have extended a little bit on the edge ourselves. We've done exactly the same thing, so it's no big deal at all. But it's a different era. Some collector who gets hoax eye sketches will cut them up, paste them on a board. You can't imagine doing this today. For printing on a gumpy paper, do we need to use crazy high DPA, DPI? For us, yes. We, well, I don't know what you call crazy high. For us, when we do tracings and then print them out for carving, the typical 300, 350 is nowhere near good enough. If I've got something at 350 DPI, which might be great for color printing in a, in a magazine or something, I can still see the dots when we're ready to carve here. So we need more than that. If I had to give a raw minimum for us, for delicate work, I'd say 600. And when I did the print last month, I prepared the tracing actually in two pieces. You didn't see this in the video, but I did it. The whole thing was at 600, but her face I did at 1200, printed it out separately, and laminated them together for pasting onto the wood. It's your call. If you're doing super fine, delicate work, you need a resolution. It's up to your, your eyes, your, your wood, your knife. For us, 300 or whatever, the typical uh, high resolution is nowhere near high enough. Oh, somebody's coming to the shop today. Spence, Spencer Davis. Spencer Davis. Is that a famous movie star? Spencer Davis. What are I thinking of? We've got a, one of our new staff members starting today. We've been interviewing the past couple of weeks people for shop staff, and one of the new ladies is starting today. I'm looking forward to meeting her. And uh, I met her last week, but I mean, I'm looking forward to uh, spending time with her and seeing how she's actually going to be able to do this. You know? Also, speaking of staff, ah ha ha, yes, I've got some bad news. 
Uh, I see some, some, it's actually quite some quite bad news yesterday. Our printer Sugasan has been uh, off for the past week or so, a family, a family business. Her husband's mother was suddenly hospitalized. And this has turned out to be a very, very, very big deal for us because Sugasan is booking off for the foreseeable future. And as in, that could be months or it could be actually years. Sugisan is the primary has been has been tabbed as the primary caregiver. Her husband's mother now, after having a stroke, needs care. And they don't live in Tokyo, they live in Fukushima. And Sugisan is tabbed as the person who is going to have to do the work. So she's going to be sort of quote moving unquote up to Fukushima, leaving her husband here. and caring for his mother. This is what you get when you marry an oldest son in Japan. And we'd sort of, we'd known for the past week after the, uh, after the stroke and thing happened last week, we've sort of seen this coming down the pipe. And I was myself just had my fingers crossed hoping they'd be able to quote, work something out. But it was pretty obvious the, which way it was going to go. And that's the way it's gone. And we've lost a printer. We've lost a printer for I have no idea how long. Well, for, for all the time that I've known Japan and known about Japan and have been living here, you know, you learn about the culture. You know, I, I read about this before I came and sort of didn't really think much of it. That can't be a thing. The idea that when a young girl and a young guy are dating and talking to each other and stuff like this, the girl has various thoughts about the young boy. You know, is he got a good job? Is he rich? Is he tall? All these things they talk about, you know. And one of the things that young women think about and keep under consideration when they are thinking about getting serious with a young guy is, is he the oldest son in the family? And if he is, this is very much uh, a negative thing. And absolutely, there will be women who at that point will say goodbye, that they wouldn't consider getting involved with a boy who was the oldest son in the family. It's a thing, and even at my age now, in some general conversation with, with a Japanese person or whatever, it can come up. They will say, Chonan desu ka? Are you, are you the oldest son? Because it matters. You know, I'm the Chonan, so in a Japanese person's viewpoint, as my parents get older and need care, I'm the point man. And it doesn't affect me here, my parents still live in Japan and I'm not married, but if I had a partner, So it very much affects marriageability. If you're an oldest son, it's a minus, a big, big, big minus. Maybe Numabi-san's apprentice. Yes, she is going to help. And in fact, I'll be talking to Numabi-san this morning about that very thing. Hara-san is her name, but she's a beginner. She's a beginner. You know. There are some positives to being the oldest son as well, aren't there? Well, in the old days, you got the family property and stuff. You got the name. What other positives are there? Is it on my Tinder profile? You know, I forgot. I'll have to update that. So I'm saying, how good is the healthcare in Japan? It's excellent. It's world class. It's excellent. And uh, nobody goes broke. You know, you don't have to start a GoFundMe page, whatever. So medical care in Japan actually is world, world class, uh, both in terms of the care you receive and in terms of how it's financed and structured. And I speak from personal experience here. Elder care is a different story. That's a different story. 
and you, you know why. You've, you've read these stories, the demographics. The two things are very different. Elder care, nursing homes, long, long, long care homes, and hospitals are completely two different animals. These leaves, you know, I'm, I'm making them, I'm keeping a lot of the original roughness. I'm not really cleaning them up too much. Because honestly speaking, once you shrink this thing down to the size we're going to do it, a lot of the rough edges of these will just simply disappear. The knife will slide along. Because we're now in April, today's April the 3rd, Monday, it was my first day at the fitness center today, the first day in the pool for the new season. You know, in Japan, seasons start in, in April, April and to some extent October. There's a job switching time in October also, but the April is the main one. And when you sign up for things, it's sort of like a little bit like a new year. And there are, at our fitness center today, I was curious, I was expecting this, it's the first day for me at the fitness center in the new season. So are there going to be a bunch of new people? There are people whose jobs have transferred them into a saksa, people whose jobs have taken them out, students have become workers, you know, high school students have become college students, whatever. It, it's a huge transition time. So at the fitness center today, I go in there a few minutes before seven with the usual crowd. I look around and it's the usual crowd. No specific person that I recognized was missing and I didn't see any new faces. But it is the first day here of the new of the new season. So I get in the pool, go, go, back, bam, 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 bam. And uh, after I've been in the pool for five or ten minutes, bang, somebody else drops into the lane. It's me and this other lady who just swim back and forth. We know, I, I don't know who she is, but we are swimming partners here. But today, she and I are doing our normal routine, normal routine, normal routine. Every 10 laps or so, I stand and she passes me because she's about 10% faster than me. But we're going through our routine this morning and then kaboom, in comes somebody else. And this guy plops into the lane, starts thrashing his way down the lane. And it's a new member. And he has picked the lane that is really not the right lane for him. He's new, he doesn't know how it works, and we've got our particular speed going on here, and the slow lane is number two, and we're in lane number three, and the fast lane is number four, and he doesn't know any of this yet. So he plopped into lane three, and within seconds, me and her, the rhythm is just blown down. <laughs> and he also doesn't know the protocol, that, you know, if you're slower, you wait at the end, and these people pass you, and then you, you take off after them. He doesn't know this. He flounders his way down to the end, turns around and keeps floundering. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? So I end up behind him. A minute later, she ends up behind me. He doesn't know the protocol. So the swim this morning was uncomfortable. After a minute of this, of waiting, of, you know, swimming slowly behind him, I just stood up at the end, waited for him to get to the other end of the pool. She passed me. She went up ahead after him. I waited, and then I, so I had to take my own breaks so that I would be at the other end of the pool from this guy. And I don't know what will happen. Somebody will chat with him in the, in the change room or whatever, or he'll probably quit anyway. They all quit after a week. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> 
So he'll either catch on or he'll quit. You know, the new newbies at the fitness center, I mean, this is a worldwide thing. We know how this works, you know. Bajillions of people sign up, and uh, how many continue is a different story. You know? So we'll see. So for the moment, no complaint. Just see how it goes. How would it be in a fitness center in some other country? Pretty much the same, I think, right? Keep tailgating him and bump into his feet. I don't think so. This is aggression. You don't do that here. <laughs> There's so someone says, aren't there supposed to be written instructions? There are so many written instructions on this sports facility. Every door you go through has a page of instructions. There's a poster on the wall with instructions. Every bath has written instructions, what not to do, what to do. There's written instructions everywhere. Some of which I understand, some of which I don't. So this guy's New Year's in January brought tons of people to my gym. Thankfully, they're gone now. So this is the same. <laughs> so <laughs> we should change the wallpaper. Yes, maybe we should. Yeah, remind me about that sometime. There are, though, uh, only relatively few. I would have expected many more newbies at this change of season, but uh, today there was that one guy. I'm not even aware of anybody else. I don't know. We'll see. The idea that they, this morning swim thing is not really a big deal in Japan. I think uh, back when I lived in Vancouver, there were hordes of people doing this. I went to the Vancouver Aquatic Center each morning before I went to the music store. And it was a thing, but here in Japan, not so much. I think for women, they don't want to get their hair wet in the morning before going to work, I guess. I don't know. So it's really not crowded there. I'm very, very happy. It's a peaceful facility. way to do this. This is a mess, this one here. And my God, it's so cheap. I, I was astonished by this. Fitness centers in Japan uh, have, during the decades that I've lived here, have been stunningly expensive. Going back to the bubble era, you would pay tens of thousands, the equivalent of tens of thousands of dollars for a gym membership or a fitness center membership. It's like golf clubs. They were a thing like that. That era is long, long, long gone now. This fitness center is in a, a shopping mall. It's up on the top floor. And uh, I'm a morning member. My pass only works from 7 in the morning until 10. There's an electronic gate to get in. And my times are 7 to 10. I've got to be out before 10 in the morning, and I can only go in after 7. It suits me fine. I don't want the evenings, the crowded weekends, whatever. And for this, I pay 4,000 yen per month. So what's that? That's like 30, 31, 32 bucks a month I pay. And I can use the, this, this pool, gym, saunas, bath, the whole thing, track room if I want to, whatever, for three hours, five days a week. And in the case of quitting, gym memberships in Japan are, it's um, very highly regulated. It's easy to quit. If I wanted to quit, simply that's it. I go to the counter and I say, that's it, this month is my last month. They will bring up the, the, the paper, put here, close, and that's it. As long as I do it before the 27th. The money is taken out on the 27th of each month. As long as, you, what it, you know, whatever you tell them, the next one will be stopped. There's no uh, difficult to get out of contracts. In the older days, there may have been such things, but here in Japan now, that's very tightly regulated. Your, your cable contract, your, your gym membership, whatever. 
I'm sure there are companies that are still trying to futz it and they don't make it easy for people to learn, but it is quite strictly regulated here. Yes, yeah, schools, most schools have pools, most schools, elementary schools have them, most schools. I can't speak for the distant countryside, but in the urban area, most schools have, uh, have pools. They only use them X weeks a year because they're outdoor pools, so they're not used all through the winter. But uh. Okay, Val, Val Mikir is asking a question here. This gray tone on these leaves, I talked about this in the video, that the gray tones in these things were instructions to the carvers to do that place in black, and it does seem so. There's no, as I mentioned in the video, because this is an encyclopedia, there's almost no chance that they would have wanted to print this with color tones. And even if they were planning to print it in color tones, this wouldn't have been the place to give those instructions. Because this sheet gets destroyed in carving the key lines. So if the intent was to tell the publisher, we want gray on some of these leaves, this wouldn't have worked because this particular sheet would have been pasted down and destroyed. So I believe still, after everything we've looked at on this whole set of sheets from the British Museum, these gray tones here are, as I described them in that video, they're intended for areas that should print black. And the, the veins here would have been given a very thin skim outlining with a white groove to make the veins stand out. Or the veins themselves could have been simply cut out and leaving as white veins. The, the, the you know, carver has all different options to do this. That's an example I didn't mention when I was showing that thing, but uh, Capucine has found, uh, she went back through basically all of Hokusai's book illustration work, and she found some examples using, for example, an axe head, where the axe had been tinted in grey, and there was a pattern on it. And we found the same axe in the same book carved by two people, one with the pattern chopped out in white and one with the pattern left in black and outlined. It was absolutely clearly very much up to the carver how to handle it. We're going to do it here. I'm going to use two blocks, as I said, the same as I did with the first print, the, the lady and the dragon. I'm going to do this with just black lines and I'm going to use a tint block for the gray. We're not making this in exactly the same format that it was designed for. I have very mixed feelings about the, the image here, the cats. I still stand by my sort of, uh, we've talked about this many times, how bad some of these ukiyo-e artists are at depicting the actual shape of animals. But I think somebody here just mentioned right now the, the energy there and the, the appearance of this thing and the, what was the word you used here? The body language, nay. I guess in that sense it is real. It's vivid. The actual anatomy, I don't think, makes much sense at all. Certainly not for this animal. The ear structure, that's not how cat's ears work on this, this thigh. And the, everything's exaggerated for effect, the feet. You know. So the anatomy doesn't work, but the spirit works. I guess that's what this is all about. It's going to be such an interesting book. One day, somebody has got to publish a book about ukiyo-e artists and their animals. Horses, tigers. Insects, they did well, beautifully. Mammals, not so. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm dissing hawk-sized cats, but our own sushi cats? Well, okay, I'll stand by the same thing. The anatomy, who cares? The spirit is there. So I think it's the same thing. You can look at Jed Sushi Cats. And I think if you go by the same criteria for judging it, it's the same thing. So birds too. So, so birds and insects. Yes. Birds and insects. It's backwards, you know. 
birds and insects, the things that they couldn't catch and see, they go by so quickly, they depicted beautifully. Mammals, stuff that they can sit there and watch and study, they didn't do well. It's really, really, really paradoxical. It needs uh, somebody with much more uh, experience and knowledge about art than me to look into this and to find examples and to write a good book about this. It would be a wonderful topic for somebody for a, for a, for a PhD or something. Ukiyo-e artists and their animals. Not sure what's happening in this corner here. Someone's mentioned the bird thing, of course, they captured birds for study, of course, and uh, shoot them or whatever, you know, sure, of course, absolutely. I know even when I lived back in Ome, my neighbor across the river, Tamura-san, he's, he's dead now, my, my God, he's been dead like 10 years or so, he collected birds. I don't know, as in like out in the garden, he would have a net and stuff, he would catch birds, you know, local songbirds. This is no longer permitted. You can't catch wild, uh, wild songbirds anymore, you know, birds in your garden. But he did, he caught them and had little cages all over the place hanging up. And in fact, it's funny, when I was at Iwano-san's place, our paper maker Iwano-san, a few weeks ago, was it a few weeks ago? I don't even remember now, this is April. Yeah, I was there a month ago or so, whatever. I was up at Iwano-san's place. I was in the Chiritori room, the room where they, they do all the, the picking of bark. And I wasn't doing any, any bark picking, I was just sitting chatting with Jun-san. So he's doing the chiritori, whatever, doing picking and, and thing, and I was just sitting chatting with him, taking some pictures, and there's a big shelf up, up towards the ceiling of the room. It's a really old, old building. There's beams and stuff, and there's dirt, crap everywhere. And there was a big high shelf up behind Jun-san, where he was sitting, and there was a bunch of bird cages. And I mean a bunch. There was like dozens, dozens of bird cages dusty and unused, all stacked up on the, on the shelf behind him. So as I said, I was chatting with Jun-san. I asked him, look at the bird cages. What's going on? Did you guys used to do? He said, yeah, it was his grandfather. It was on uh, Ichibe Daihachi. Daihachi Ichibe-san, the eighth. It would be Jun-san's grandfather. So not the current living national treasure, who is Jun-san's father, but his father. And he was into this. He was into birds. So he would, you know, put, put stuff out in the garden. The birds would come down and get stuck on this. He would catch them, use nets, whatever. 
and he had bird cages all over the place full of these little birds and you know feed them with tweezers and find worms for them and all this kind of stuff it was a, a gentleman's hobby back not that long ago just a couple of decades ago here in Japan Again, if this were calligraphy, I would be using my eraser more. I would be touching up some of the edges of these to take off, like, for example, this one. You, you can touch up the edge of this and make it smoother. Take the eraser and smooth out the line. But this is not calligraphy. These are leaves. And, and this roughness and, and unsteadiness, whatever, and shakiness, that's just perfect for exactly what we need. So. Again, the sort of the, the roughness that you're seeing here, once we shrink it down, I mean, it's going to be astonishingly small when it comes time to carve this, even smaller than that. But yeah, do they look like leaves? I think they look like leaves. It's okay. Some of it's a bit funny. Look at this. Too thick here, too thin here. There's our decisions. Do I, do I fix this? Clearly, the brush took, if you were drawing a leaf, there's the main vein going down, the side veins. Look at this vein. Should I fix that? There's clearly a, an over heavy area here. When we take away our own drawing here, just this hide ours, there's the original. It doesn't look so bad once you get the gray tone in and once it's there. So I think I'll leave it. I'll go with it. If I try and neaten everything up too much, it just it will be just too neat. Oh, I know, I know. I know. Before we get to the end of the stream here, there is a show and tell today, tonight. We're going to still, we'll finish off those new books we got the other day. But mods, can I ask a favor? And maybe you've already done this. Those of you who are on uh, mobile right now, this is no big deal because you can't switch out. And look at this. 
but the prints we've been looking at in the last couple of show and tells, I got a bunch of them up online in our collection over the weekend. Cording Gummy's got this. There's two sets. The Kabuki Sinshafada are up there, and then some of the actors. Here we go. Thank you, Cording Gummy san. So those of you who are on a computer with a big screen, you can take a look close up at some of those prints that we saw the other day. You're welcome. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that last night. I got so many freaking jobs. I've got a wood block on my desk. This is what I should have done last night. It's the key block to the Kyoto Journey number three print. And Kawasaki-san, our carver, today she wants color blocks. This is what I should have done last night. My time management is absolutely indescribably awful. There's no other thing to say. I have the time management skills of a six-year-old. Someone says, how do I remember everything I need to do? Do I take notes somewhere? <laughs> Doesn't everybody? Everybody with a laptop has a trackpad and a note stuck on each side of it, don't they? Someone's asking about the edge thing here. I actually don't know at this point. What I've done is I've just brought in the British Museum uh, data here, but I don't. I didn't write down on this file where my own border lines are. So I don't know actually. Our own print. Our own print may end up coming like just this far, or our own print may be this far. I don't know where our own line is. We do this with each one of them because the original sketches were not carefully done to the millimeter and we want our own prints to be really quite nicely fit in exactly the same size. So in, in, if it's important, we just simply draw a little bit more, cut a bit more, draw a bit more, cut a bit more. There's no uh, essential information at the end. If this print ends up looking like that or if it ends up looking like this, makes no difference whatsoever. Hokusai would not care. He wouldn't give a, ra a he wouldn't care at all. So it's irrelevant. None of that stuff was his business.
Also, speaking of those uh, photographs that I uploaded, uh, the, the pictures of those prints that I uploaded over the weekend, I haven't yet put any of the data in place. Uh, for example, those Kabuki actor portraits, the five of them in that second set, 00251. The names are clearly there on the, uh, each print. So these are known people in known roles. So that bit of research has to be done. We've got to figure out who these people are, what roles they are playing, uh, and this is all known. This is uh, 1913, 1914. The Kabuki records are there. It should be with somebody who's got uh, knowledge of, of, the, of the older Japanese kanji there. It should be easy to figure out who these people are. So for me, first step, we just get the photography done, get them up online, and we'll do the research bit by bit as we have time. Who's that going upstairs? 8.46. In today for printing are, there's two packages of paper out today. One is Dei Chan. She's working on the young girl and blossoms. And then also today, uh, who's coming? Ayumi-san. And she's working on, I don't remember what she's working on. Oh yeah, she's working on the 11th print in the Woodblock Pilgrimage series. The lady, the naked lady in the onsen is what she's working on today. And in fact, on Friday when she was here, we were chatting about this. She wants to know how much to let the people see the woman's body and how much to, to bury it in the water. Yeah, a lot of this is too wiggly. These wiggles are going to absolutely disappear once we shrink this down, you know. I'm drawing more detail here than we'll be able to carve, actually. So, anyway, at least it will be clean and clear on the paper, which is the thing. If you saw the video, you get the approach here. For me, to work with those lines would be a constant guessing game with my knife. But having taken this time and trouble to do this, there's no more guessing on the wood. I can see clearly, bang, just cut it and away you go. If this is well, well worth the extra step to do this, or extra step, the, the step to do this. Where's the next leaf? How's our time? 8.48. We should have Ayano-san coming this morning, I guess, in a few minutes. Which version of the onsen print? It's the Woodblock Pil... No, no, it's Japan Journey. I'm sorry. I got misquoted. It's the Japan Journey number 11, the November print in the Japan Journey series. I'm sorry. I, I, I made a mistake there. That's the one ayumi sans doing right now. Two competing versions of the onsen print. Were there? You remember more than I do. Ayano-san, be sure to ask her what she did this weekend. Is there something happening that I don't know about? I don't. <laughs> She's listening to this, John. She listens to it on the train on the way here. Actually, I understand. I can say this without fear of, uh, of being foolish or anything. 
she's uh, today's going to be an interesting work day for her. It's uh, the new month, so we did the subscription billing. But this time round, the first of the month fell on a Saturday. Ayana-san is not here. She never works weekends. Of course, we, we try and stick to a, a modern ethic here. You know, do your, do your job Monday to Friday, and, and away you go. But the billing fell on the Saturday this time. And she and I, over the past week, have made some changes in how the subscription billing works. No changes from the, from the subscriber's point of view, but in the case of the software and the workflow and the shipping and that stuff like that, we made a couple of major changes in the software, Thursday and Friday. So there's always this thought, you know, once you've done a, a you know, if you've got a new version of your software in place, you really have to do it carefully. I checked and I tested and I tested and I tested and I tested some more. But there we were, April 1st on Saturday afternoon, I had to hit the button, do all the subscription billing for the people on the 1st. And then quickly run and check this and check this to see if I've broken something. It seems that I don't have any sense so far that I've broken something. I got no panic emails from people and the payments flowed through. And this is Monday morning. The stuff is going to be on the shipping desk in Ome to send out those prints that people paid for on the 1st and 2nd. But Ayano-san is coming to work this morning with not a little trepidation. How did it go over the weekend? Somebody's remembering more. Rod Sound, you're remembering more than I remember. I'm sorry. I really don't remember. Whatever happened there happened. The kind of thing you're describing does happen all the time. Put it, it happened and behind me in a way it's gone. I don't lose sleep over that stuff. So, uh, so I don't remember the episode you're talking about. No, I'm sorry. Someone says, do I work seven days a week, Dave? Well, do we need to talk about this? <laughs> Do we need to talk about this? The problem with Dave's workflow is that still I am in the, what's the word? Uh, I'm in the chain, that's not the right word. I'm in the, I'm an overall manager, but also I'm a line worker, like, like this example here. Kawasaki-san, it's for, for KJ number three, Kyoto Journey number three. I prepared the hanshita because that's my job, sent it to her, and she did the carving. Now the next step is to do color blocks, but she sent this back to me now. Dave, please prepare color blocks. We can't send this over to Jed because Jed, he does the designs, but he can't translate into the perfect color separation for wood blocks. Kawasaki-san, being just a carver, doesn't have that experience. Dave, who is a carver and a 40-year experienced printer, can look at this thing and say, here's how it should be done. But what I'm getting at is this, that it's really basically only me here that can do this. So when you say, do I work seven days a week? I should have done this yesterday, actually, but I am now going to have to do this today because she's at home today now sitting there twiddling her thumbs with nothing to do. An experienced carver, ready to work, and she's laid off today because I didn't do my work yesterday. So, do I work seven days a week? <coughs> and hearing that story, uh, uh, any business uh, management consultant who is listening in on this says, that's kind of interesting to hear that and how what do you expect to happen on the day you get sick or on the day you get a stroke or on the day you die what will happen to your business then let's talk about something else <laughs> Thank you. 
Is that our hotel lady with the vacuum cleaner? I haven't heard that for quite a while, actually. The sound you hear outside, I believe, is the, the lady doing her vacuuming in the lobby with the front door of the hotel across the street. Which leaf is on top, this way or this way? The bus factor. Who can take over if I get hit by a bus? Our problem is we sort of have too many, I'm going to say too many buses. We have, we have too many streets. I'm walking down. I'm the IT manager for the company, you know. I wrote every scrap of the software, and that's a pretty big, I don't know, that's a pretty big job to, to fill all of a sudden if, uh, if the bus comes along, you know. And then this one, the, the, the color separation work. Let's just not go there. Let's just leave it, please. The bus factor. Is that a thing, I guess? Is it? I guess it must be. Okay, what do we do with this one? This black blob here. Let's take away what I've drawn here for a minute. We've got stuff like this here. What's this? Just this blob. Now, of course, remember, he's controlling his brush here. He's dipping his brush, blah, 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 dipping his brush, blah, blah, blah. It's not uncommon for too much ink to come out. We saw this in the last print all over the place. So he just hit too much and then controlled it. Now, do I reproduce the blob, which I think has no meaning as far as a leaf goes? I think I'll clean this one up a little bit. Again, if I wasn't showing you this and I wasn't talking about it, nobody would ever, ever, ever know. There's a vein on this leaf. Let's put the white in. Bingo! Looks like a vein. Nobody on this planet would have ever known that I took away that black blob. So in that sense, you're, it's a little bit like you're seeing the sausage being made. Is that the expression, you know? Normally you don't see these things. Just close your eyes and enjoy the sausage. Oh, ho, 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 you're so early. Oh, my God. Wow, 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 wow. Good morning, good morning. She forgot to get coffee. How can you forget to get coffee? Someone say hello. Someone was walking, you know, like walking around, looking around like this. And by the time I realized, oh, I passed the convenience that I wanted to stop by, so no coffee. But it's good because we have... A new coffee, coffee machine, machine upstairs, but we one of those old capsules. Is that okay? So it's prior date, ration date to two years ago. This color. Okay, question for everybody. This is Ayana San. We to pick up to have you answer the question she just asked. We have a, a coffee machine upstairs, which used to be used in the old party room downstairs. It's one of those ones where you put the little capsules in, and you you know you, the hot water comes through the capsule, and you you drink your coffee. Some of the coffees have a coffee plus a milk type capsule. Some have an espresso. There's all different kinds. We have a drawer full of capsules left over from pre-corona. 
before the pandemic. They sort of have an expiry date, you know, oh, that's a little bit old. <laughs> Can we still use them? Over to you guys. <laughs> I think it's sealed and, you know, there's no hold. On so the, you're the generally okay with this. Interesting. Uh, Dave, Dave is thinking it's totally okay. It's just a pack of dried coffee or something. Dave is thinking it's okay. A typical Japanese lady, you know, like, like the ladies I've known, would say, throw <laughs> that away, don't you dare touch this. So I'm, I'm, to hear you say it seems okay, I like yeah, it. <laughs> it means or something dry, I, don't, I really don't mind, you know, it's sealed completely. Okay, let's, let's see some of the comments here, sorry, 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 sorry. I would use them, just a suggestion, probably fine, probably. <laughs> still good, still good, they're sealed, okay, if it's not swelled up, that's interesting. If they're swollen or something's inside, yes. Someone says a sniff test. Well, we can't sniff it. Well, but no, we can sniff the coffee. All right, all right. The general feeling here, a bit again, remember, I understand, these are foreigners like me. These are not Japanese people. So the general feeling is, uh, so the, they're, not, they're not dangerous, but the quality may be not so good. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I can, I can yeah, feel it. I had yeah. two cups of coffee. Um, I'm, I've been feeling okay, but the, the taste. Just well, you did it. You tried it. Just sour this guy. Oh, maybe it's because of the, you know, the, the, the kind of beans, you know, those sour beans. Mm, I don't mm, know. Mm, I'm not mm, sure. Mm, okay. I didn't realize you tried. It. I thought you were just still thinking about this. Okay. Um, I, I didn't know. She tried it last week, and, and she's here. She didn't die. So it looks like we're going to so get through. <laughs> Yeah, okay. all the cups upstairs will be mine, okay. unless you okay. want to drink No, I'll try to Anyway, the big question, the big, big question is, how was your weekend? Ah, uh, I know, good and bad, this day. Saturday was such a nice weather, first time in a while, like, it had been raining, mm. you know, mm. all day, every day. Mm. But uh, Saturday, finally, good weather. So I went to my grandparents' house, which is uh, in Tochigi, located in Tochigi. My bicycle? No, no. <laughs> by train. Okay, okay, okay. I no, train no. to to go to my parents' house, and then my my mom gave me a drive. Oh, oh, oh. So Tochigi is the next prefecture to the northeast. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then my grandpa has like this wild big field, and we were helping him with uh, planting potatoes and leeks, and then weeding. Really? Yeah. Gardening, like, like gardening, planting work. So this farm year. farm work. So this y'all. So you're a farm girl for the weekend. Fun girl for weekend. Really, my, really, really. my future dream is that when I get older, like age 60 something, 65, I'm going to take over that field. Mm, I can't do because Tochigi is like my three hours away from here by train, so I can't commute to Tochigi. But once I, I don't know, retired. Ayana-san. Hi. Ayana-san. Hi. We're going to try making paper soon. Uh, we need a source of mulberry guess where the good mulberry comes from what part of japan ibaragi tochigi are you thinking what i'm thinking yeah maybe we can try that i don't want to wait till you're 60 because that has a slight little problem from my point of view to wait till you're 60. she's 20 something now 40 more years <laughs> it might might be a little bit late for me so you say you're planting now. Should we talk about this? Yeah, yeah, why not? Because my grandparents, I think uh, they did ask me like if I want to take over their field and house. Okay, well, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> going that far. I mean, if, if there's I'm a, very serious. <clears throat> if you guys are spending weekends there planting something up there in Ibaragi or Tochigi, mm. my God, let's put some mulberry in to see if we can learn how to do this. That's all this net. Big field, this guy. I think we can do it. There are some spaces that he's not actually, you know. Okay, going we have all kinds of documentation. I have books upstairs how to do the cuttings, how to take the cuttings. You've got to cut them at a 27 and a half degree angle, you've got to plant them with the sun in a certain thing, and you've got to bow down three times. I've got all the instructions <laughs> how to do this. So, 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 so. And then we found uh, Yamazakura in his field. It was like, yeah, those trees over there. They're called Yamazakura, which, you know, <laughs> the, you know, it's kind of red, you know, in this area. Like, Yamazakura, desu ka? Like, like, the plot trees. thickens, the plot thickens. <laughs> Mulberry, trees. Is this girl taken? It was so much fun. And so that happened Saturday. I was really happy. But uh, because that was a nice weather, and uh, because I was just seeing my family, yeah, yeah. I didn't wear a mask, ah. I didn't wear the glasses. And it was out in the country? 
Yeah. I saw lots of cedar trees like mm. all around mm. the field. Mm. I didn't mm. feel anything, mm. you know, mm. that day. Mm. And I came back. Yesterday was so miserable. Hontoni, no, sneezing all day. I'm not exaggerating. Mm. I mm. used mm. I can guess, of a course, box, of course, a box of, of tissue. Of course, gone. of course. Uh, sneezing all day, runny yeah. nose and tears. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I thought maybe I would not be able to come today, but luckily symptoms is gone. So okay. Okay. it okay. came. So it's good news, bad news. Good news, mm-hmm. bad news. Yeah, on Sony. Okay. Yeah. See the trees. Well, tell me about it. So, so, so. When I was younger, of course, it, you know, same thing. The story you're telling me. Same mm-hmm. thing. These days, not so much. No, wakai. Wakai Wakai. Wakai. I think an, an extreme reaction to pollen and stuff is not an indication that you're an unhealthy person. I think, as far as I understand the science. A vivid reaction to pollen and stuff. This means your body is very good at, you know, fighting mm-hmm. stuff. I think, you know, I when you get older like me, <laughs> the reaction is low because our bodies are not, you know, it's given up. It can't fight these things. So, so this, and as much as I understand it, so, it. so, so, and so. I, I was checking my eyes and nose at the, my grandparents' house, and my my grandma saw me. I was so sensitive. You grew up in the city, more. Oh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. that's no, what okay, it is, okay, Grandma. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, next time she has that conversation, you can ask her, what were you like when you were younger? So How was it? You know, we'll see. So. But actually, too, you can't do that because this current situation in Tokyo with the pollen everywhere, this was not, it was not always like this. Mm-hmm. So her grandmother, when she was young, if we're going back then, what are we going back? 50 That's years, 60 years yeah. ago. This was not so strong then. It's in the post-war years. There was a vast need for this house-building lumber that all the mountains anywhere near Tokyo and any major city were, were devastated, cut and planted with sugi trees. And they are now, of course, flourishing. Mm. So this is not something that happened in the old days. There were sugi trees, but not in these massive plantations that we see mm. in the post-war period. So, so her grandmother will look at her and say, you're so weak, you know. <laughs> but really the environment is very, very different so from what it was back in the 1950s and 60s. Yeah. Whatever yeah. grandma, grandma says, uh, that's okay. I don't want to go against her. So. Yeah, no, <laughs> But it was so much fun. No, it sounds great. Day, sounds yeah. great. And great. having lunch outside, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, I've never heard this before. You, you don't go very often. That, that was my, actually my first time going there. Really? Yeah, because uh, that place, my grandparents live in this like major city in Tochigi. Utsunomiya. Utsunomiya, isn't mm-hmm. it? The field actually is like. Oh, I see. So it's, so it's really not used most of the time. They don't live there anymore. They actually. don't live there anymore. Ah, I mean, okay, my okay, grandpa okay. goes there like every day. Yeah, 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 day. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay. But, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So it's an untended farm area. Yeah. Some of this. Yeah, there's, most of Japan is like this untended, left alone mm-hmm. rural area. I didn't know that. So within the team, we have access to land so up yep. in the right area for growing mulberry. Yep. Although it's I didn't know this. I didn't know this. You don't have to commute. Mulberry doesn't need daily care. Nope, it needs planting and it needs occasional care X times during the year. So, so. They're lining up. Okay, what seems happening? Next person is next. Oh, yes. hey, hey, hey. See you later, Anna. Stand up, hey, hey, hey. Next, next. Hey, 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 hey. Look at this. No mask. Oh my God, I'm going to die. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We switched the sign on the front door. Did you see the sign on the front door? We finally switched it. The sign on the front door used to say masks, and now it says masks now optional. So for, <laughs> for, for the customers now, the staff is still wearing masks because that's the agreement. And I asked all the staff about this, what's your feeling on this? And the staff at the moment wants to stay masked up. They, I'm talking about shop staff here. But lots of customers now are coming in with no masks. So we're, we're dialing it down bit by bit by bit. And in the group upstairs, the four printers, Sugu-san, Ishikawa-san, Dei-chan, Aimi-san, she's dumped hers first. She's the first one to let go. <laughs> because she lives with two kids, Hoikwen daycare. She's, <laughs> no, seriously, you've been through this. It's come around to her house again and again and <laughs> again and <laughs> again. <laughs> so, so, so. She's had it, seen it. No, when I said staff, I meant shop staff is what I meant, sorry. Anyway, I'm saying, what's going on? What's the story? <laughs> oh, we were talking about this. This is the print she's... Here, put it here. Here's the camera. This is the print she's working on. And this is our official Mokohankan sealed mihon. 
we're, we're, we're big time now. You know, it's no longer, where's the sample? I don't know, just do whatever you want. We now have official signed, sealed samples. Give me, sorry, Amy-san, what's the question? でもこの見本見るとなんか青っぽいんですけどどっちにしますこれ多分赤入ってる隅に赤入ってるけどこれこれでもさ青じゃないどっちどっちがいいのかなと思ってまあ今隣はブルーでしょだからメがいいの両方
I mean, not a whole lot of concentrated work today because of the talking, but there we are. I'm going to work through the leaves first, get used to the leaves. <clears throat> then I'll switch to the cats. Oh, maybe I'll do the flowers. Rather than just work across the thing horizontally one way, Dave's quirk here, I'll do, I'll do the leaves first so I can get a feeling for what the leaves feel like. Then I'll do maybe the flowers and then do cat for the calligraphy. I'll do it zone by zone by zone. It's probably not how somebody else would have done it, but it's okay. It's how it's going to do. Is there two guys there? Maybe. It's, it is. It's party season. It has been all through March and it will be into April. It's party season, so the restaurants are still very, very busy. It's also tourist season. I know Asakusa really now, I, I, that's not every day of the week, it's totally crazy busy. But there's really now not a lot of difference anymore between the weekends and the weekdays. Before the tourists came back, weekdays were very, very quiet. And now it's seven days a week. This place is busy, busy, busy. Okay, we have one batch of prints we still haven't looked at in this group of things. I'm going to stick with the same little stuff because we haven't seen them all yet. An update first. I mentioned earlier in the stream today, and somebody linked the photographs, these prints that we got over the past couple of uh, uh, days. These prints that we got, the 12 months of, of Kabuki and the other ones, the Nigaoe, the caricatures, the Kabuki portraits, they are now out of here. I have taken them out of the albums because, 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 I suspect it as much and it is as much. If you look at the very first page of the very first album, this was the album that had the Senshafta prints. Look at this. And some of this is mold. When you see the fuzzy area growing around a thicker dot in the middle, you're looking at mold. Foxing will not usually be fuzzy out to the edges. Fuzzy, foxing will have more straight edges. But the one that grows in an absolutely circular shape, getting fuzzier, fuzzier, fuzzier as it goes, is mold. It may, it may have a foxing spot in the middle of it, but it is mold. So it is good that I got these out of here. They weren't actually in all that bad condition. They've done a hundred years, but given what's happening here to the album, the print should not stay there. Now luckily, in this album, the one I showed you the other day, the prints were not totally flatly glued in. They were just tacked in at the corner. In fact, and you can see, I was able to get the prints out with no damage to either the prints or the album. You've seen me before soaking prints off, where we chop the album up, the prints go in hot water, the prints are saved, and the album gets destroyed. For this one, I'm very happy about this, I, it wasn't necessary to destroy the album. So we will keep and preserve the albums as they are, but now the prints are safely taken away. And we've got them here now in this folder. So the prints are safe and sound. And you can see on the back, there's next to no damage on the corners where they came off. There's a little slight dab where glue was, but nothing more than that. And the prints themselves really don't show. I can't see any foxing or any mold on these things at all. So perhaps I should have left them in. I think in the interests of their long-term preservation, it was better to take them out. But we haven't destroyed anything. We didn't destroy the album and didn't destroy the books, the, the, uh, the prints. And now I got them all, uh, all photographed carefully and they're online. So we saw, that we saw the, the Kabuki pictures the other day. We went through one by one. And then on the previous stream, I showed you the first album of these. This is Nigao, Nigao E which in modern terms means caricatures, as in parodied caricatures. You know, there's, there's a Nigao A place down the street. You sit there and the guy does the brushwork and ha ha ha, look at this caricature. But in this sense, these are not caricatures in the distortion parody sense. They're simply portraits. So I guess Nigao A as a, as a term has morphed over the years. And we saw this. We saw the first package and we saw the first five prints that were inside it. This is what we saw the other day. 
we've seen these. So now we can move on. They're no longer stuck inside the album. But we can now take a look at the final group of prints here. This is again, this is Nigao E and this is Dai Go Shu. I think the other day I said it was set number four. I was misreading it. This is a five. And the package again is woodblock printed package. And the date on these, the prints we're going to look at now for the next few minutes, they are Taisho 4. It's one year later than the group we looked at the other day. Taisho 4 is, I think, 1915? Yes, the bot's got it, 1915. 1915. Here's the packet. It's, it's not the packet, it's a woodblock printed envelope and the five prints would have been slipped inside it for distribution to the subscribers. Let's have a look. It's the similar kind of thing that we saw yesterday. Astonishing, astonishing print quality. These are, of course, scars. This man, the, the particular role he's playing here is obviously some kind of bad guy. And these are sword knife scars, you know, makeup. Is it Ichimura? I think it's, oh, I'm taking a wild flyer here. Ichimura, uh, I don't know, I don't know. That's, that's past my pay grade. Look at the hair carving. <laughs> and we have the same package. It's we've learned now it's A Shu Ga. It's a Taisho era artist called A Shu. And we have both here. This is all this replicates what we saw the other day. On the right hand side here we have Hori. It reads from right to left. Hori, it's Katori, and Suri is Fujinami, Fujinami. And then the publisher here is listed, it says Han Moto, we're reading left to right now, oh no, no right to left, Han Moto, Dave, and it's Eiko. And what's curious is, it says the publisher, Han Moto, but over on the packet that contains these prints, the back of the packet, Eiko is a publisher, doesn't appear. And we have here Hakko Tokoro, publisher, and this is Nishiki e Kai. Nishiki e is a, a word for full color woodblock prints. It sort of is a code word for ukiyoe. And this is Ni, Nishiki e Kai, the society for Nishiki e, Nishiki pictures. That's listed as the publisher in Tokyo. And then it's also published in Osaka. And we have here Darumaya Shoten. And that's the name for a bookstore. So it would be the distributor in the Kansai would be a place called Darumaya. It's an old way of writing Nishiki. I, I, I wouldn't have recognized it myself first, but I, I came to realize that is Nishiki. But if you had shown me that, I would have said that looks like Fu, Fushiki. But it is Nishiki, trust me. Trust me, ha ha ha. Pull out, push in. And this set actually is better than the set we saw the other day in terms of technical accomplishment and uh, refinement. This is set number five. I don't have sets two, three, and four, but it seems to me that these guys were dialing it up as they went along. Similar style, similar style. Look at, look at the ear. The, the and the embossing that comes up by putting the color in. Look at this. <laughs> Can we get the right angle here? In a bit too close, I'm going to pull in, put, pull in, push out.
And the depth of color, just, we, this is to die for. Absolutely to die for. We would love to be able to do this. Rich, deep black. Ah, oh, good morning, Ken San. Hello. Good morning. Okay, this is worth talking about. The black here, as opposed to the black that you saw me carving a few minutes ago and talking about it on Hokusai, black here is done as a color. You get the key lines here, and that's the same key line here. The red is transparent almost and can go on top, although you can see there's a bit of opacity in here. This is printed so vividly saturated, it's actually covering up part of the key block. But over here, the black color block is cut back away from the key lines. Doesn't quite match up here, got it? Someone's talking about they missed a line. Do you think there should be a line here? All right, complain to the management. <laughs> it looks as good from the back side as it does from the front. Ah, the other day, remember I was telling you, when we see purple quite frequently, when we look at it from the back side, we see the red component. Not so today. So, it's, well, it might be a bit more reddish. I don't know. You tell me. Am I, am I seeing something here that's not here? Sometimes we turn the purple over and really it looks red on the back. This one? Well, I guess I can't say so. I can see a reddish tinge, but it's certainly not the red that I was expecting to see. And I'm not sure about the pigments. One reason why I took these out of the folder and I did it dry, I cut these out of the folder. I didn't put them in water. It's because I am nervous about this purple and I am also nervous about this red on this next print. I do not think this can go in water safely. I think that red will blur in water. So I did not want to put these under water. And I wish you could see this. There's, you know, just whatever, whatever, whatever. Look at this. Can we get some of this? Very unusual embossing here. Good morning. Oh, hello, hello. Come in, come in. Should I go upstairs first? If you like, I'm still doing live right now for another three or four minutes. I'm sorry, no, no problem. No. If you like, whatever. Or Ken Sans here. You can show. Ken, this is a new lady. Have you met her? You can show her around the time sheets and stuff, maybe. Okay, sure. This is Ken Sans. Oh. This is Udagawa-san, Udaga sure? So, Udaga so, thank you. So I'll be finished in a few minutes. Okay, well, thank you. The new lady. And again, this is a man. This is Kabuki. This is a man dressed up as a, as a, a, a female character. And the quality, just the quality of carving here, the quality of preparation, of carving, of printing. We've got hairs that just run straight out. That's sort of easy enough to carve. Can I get in close? This is the kind of hair carving called yaege. Look at this. When they're straight out, your knife can run off the end and away they go. Your, your, you know, your knife just runs hair by hair, out you go into the free open space. But this style of hair carving, your knife has to come up each one and it's not free to run out into the open space. You have to carve to a zero point and then stop before you hit the next batch. And this is whatever, this is beyond, just beyond belief. I, I just get a tape and say the same thing every week, I'm sorry. I've never, never seen it done this well before. I myself did this with one of my prints, the number 15 in the Mystique series, but this is incredible. For the scaler, that's my finger. Look at this, that's my finger. 
just so you understand what's going on. That whole in group here, how many dozens of hairs under one fingernail? No, it's not specifically related to the fact that it's a wig. We will see Utamaro beauties, and they will have the same thing. This, this is just, it's a thing. It's a style. <coughs> it's called Yaege. Remember, too, also, when, whenever we see, there's a bit of a confusing aspect here to this thing. We see this hair. These are not hairs, like Dave's hair here is hanging down over his face. That's not what we're looking at here. The hairs we're seeing here, these are roots. This is hair that has been pulled back. So what we're looking at here in that line on that picture, it's this line, the line of hair that is pulled back from the head. It's not hair that is falling forward, it's pulled back. She's not beautiful, but my God, the print is astonishing. I'm too slow. We've got to get going. We've got to get going. What is this? Two more? This particular group is not yet online. I've done the photography, but I haven't done the Photoshop editing yet. So stand by a couple more days. We have another bad guy. Tattoo. Bat. Man, Dave's hairline still going strong. So far, so far, it's real. Batman. I don't, again, I don't know the story, sorry. Chitty, my God, Chitty, throw it away, reject. Yep, yeah, it's Chitty in the paper. Reject it. <laughs> The, there's a million things I haven't talked about. Just the way that in these prints you've seen some deep rich color, some delicate color, and yet the overall balance in these prints just matches. You get some prints from the end of the Meiji maybe or whatever, when the guys had given up and there would be a Prussian blue in a print and it would be so dark it blots out everything else in the whole print. These guys, even though they've been using vivid, vivid, vivid colorations, everything balances. The whole tone and look and feel of the print is balanced perfectly, no matter how vivid some of them are and how delicate some of them are. Okay, we close off with this one. And it is just, oh my God, it is, look at this. I feel too bad about the chitty. I really wish they had used a bit of bit better paper because there's chitty all over the place, which spoils it. There are so many things happening here. So many things happening. The way they've done the gradation on the hilt of the sword, embossing everywhere, the tassels, his, his beard, whatever, you know, tell me about it. This is an, an astonishing creation. Absolutely an astonishing creation. Somebody's typed here, they are just showing off, and yes, they are just showing off. It's the peak, those pre-war years, the Taisho era, and into the 20s and 30s when the last generation of craftsmen were still alive the last group of publishers who cared about this when they were still publishing, and the last group of consumers who knew the difference, who were ready to buy this stuff. All those three things were all still in place. And then in the 1930s, the world changed, and it all went away, and gone forever. We here at Mokongam were trying to replicate what we can of this stuff but we are failing. With every print we sell, we fail. 
it's okay. We're doing well. We're doing as well as we can, and we're always trying to do it more better. And we keep in mind these things. And maybe if it all does last long enough, we can do something like this sometime again. I don't know. Almost certainly we'll never get there. But it's a little dramatic. We're going to die trying. You know, we're going to die trying. It's really fun for me to show you guys this kind of stuff. Our collection upstairs now, we have thousands of prints like this. It used to just be so common. We have thousands of prints like this. I, somebody gave you the link to the collection a while ago. Get over there, turn your room lights off, get a big Mac or something with a big screen, and look at this stuff over there. Okay, got to sign off. We are going to be super, 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 super busy. Okay, thanks very much. Today's Monday. I'll be back three more days from now on Thursday. Could be carving, could be doing something else, could be just some more boring tracing. I don't know. I'll see you then. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. See you soon.